Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Improving Computer Network Defense Analysis Training with uh, other solid replication techniques. Uh, thank you all for coming today um, and thanks for, for having me. Uh, my name is uh, Juan Welfo and I am the CEO and lead IT security consultant at, en at Encrypto. Uh, Encrypto is a company specialized in uh, information security services uh, located in, uh, in Norway. Uh, just to tell you a bit about my background, I'm a computer engineer, I have a few certifications, and uh, I, my work, I do both offense and uh, defense. So I do application network security testing, red teaming, and um, I also have some time for uh, helping customers with uh, network security monitoring and, and training. Uh, in my free time, which I don't have much, I uh, develop a few uh, open source tools. Uh, one of them is the Blue Team Training Toolkit, and hopefully we will see a little bit more about it in the, in the demos. So before we get started, uh, can you show your hands those Blue Teamers? Okay, Red Teamers, anyone? Anyone in the training industry? College, universities? Okay. So this talk is uh, focusing on defense, but I have to say that um, most of the stuff that I'm going to show today could be turned into a you know, red team uh, asset. So uh, in this case, uh, the information, and I will show you also a few tips, uh, could be useful for red, red team engagements uh, as well. <clears throat> so it's old news that AV and firewalls can be bypassed by attackers. And uh, even though we have had some improvements uh, with the next uh, generation firewalls, uh, next gen AV and so on, uh, the truth is that the technology is not make things any better. So it seems like uh, companies are understanding that it's not possible to keep uh, the attackers from coming in. So they, little by little, they are focusing more on detection and incident response. And if you are in a blue team and if an incident happens, uh, sooner or later you will need computer network defense analysis, just for short, uh, CNDA, uh, at some point. If we look at the training landscape, uh, we could see that in the information security industry we're having a, a challenge and we have a shortage of qualified InfoSec professionals. So what we see, at least in, in Norway, is that uh, many of the organizations that we work with, uh, they tend to uh, f well have a hard time when they try to build a, a blue team from scratch, or if they try to maintain, hire new people, find the right skills that they want. So instead of going through the painful process of finding the, um, uh, the right employee, uh, they tend to um, teach and train uh, existing employees with that knowledge, that skill set that they are missing. In addition to that, if we look at the uh, offensive in InfoSec industry, uh, focusing on adversary replication, simulation services, threat team, pen testing, and so on, uh, we tend to see that um, organizations here at the top of the pyramid are the ones that usually get the most benefit from them. Basically because they already have a blue team in place, so at the same time that you are testing the security of a company, you are uh, training or testing as well uh, the incident response that the blue team has. However, this does not mean that, for example, medium-sized businesses, training institutions, or maybe small businesses and individuals don't have a need for detection or for improving their skills. <clears throat> so just for clarity, um, according to the US CERT, uh, computer network defense analysis is a specialty area and uh, it uses defense measures and information collected from a variety of uh, sources to identify, analyze and report events that occur or might occur within the network in order to protect information, information systems and networks from threats. If we look at the job description of the uh, computer network defense analysis, uh, here we have common tasks once again, according to the US CERT. Among them, we have uh, analy analyze ne network traffic to identify anomalous activities, conduct research, analysis, and correlation <clears throat> across uh, different uh, data sets, coordinate, <clears throat> uh, 
coordinate with enterprise-wide staff uh, to validate alerts and so on and so forth. So for most people or for most organizations, when we talk about blue team plus computer narco defense uh, skills, uh, we are thinking about defense. Uh, for me, that I tend to keep an offense uh, perspective, uh, I have to say that a red team with computer network defense analysis uh, skills, it means that you have a much more effective red team. In other words, the red team will understand how the blue team operates, and uh, this will allow them to be more efficient and uh, at the same time uh, more effective when achieving their goals. Whether you are a blue teamer, red teamer, or maybe just a single individual uh, learning, uh, I have to say that practice uh, is going to be required if you want to improve and if you want to move on to the next level. And uh, the skills, at least in the computer network defense analysis, uh, you can get them from uh, many different ways. Uh, one of the most used is by uh, learning and analyzing network traffic. And this is a key material that needs to be generated in an efficient way if you want to get relevant cases and then analyze and learn. So if you want to uh, start your training sessions, uh, you will need some sort of environment where you can uh, run maybe a piece of malware, um, monitor the network, and then capture the, the traffic which is happening right there. We argue that there are four major challenges uh, that companies are facing when they are trying to train uh, blue team people. And uh, the first one is the difficulty of implementation of an attack scenario. So the definition, it would be how difficult it is to create, configure, and monitor an, an environment which is hosting attack scenarios. How you can set it up, and especially, if you need to reuse it, how much work, how much time is going to be required. So when you are planning and preparing a training session, you will have to spend some time during the preparation. Uh, typical tasks here could be uh, finding out what sort of uh, attack scenario you want to, uh, to simulate for the training session. And um, like I said, if you have a kind of, kind of a fixed setup that you can reuse over and over, this is going to require some uh, maintenance. <clears throat> Think about, for example, if you, if you have to give a, or configure a specific patch level in your, in your environment, would it require work? Are we thinking about virtual machines or physical environments? So this is all about the difficulty of implementation. Another important component is the uh, monitoring. In other words, how we can capture the network traffic produced in the, during the training session, and at the same time uh, have it in a format which is compatible with tools so we can work uh, further with them. If we think about the ideal training session, uh, I think that uh, the training session should have low preparation requirements. The next challenge is cost, and this is the amount of resources required for the correct implementation of an attack scenario. And basically, uh, here we are talking about budgets. Organizations, IT departments run on budgets, uh, which means that if you want to have a training environment in place, uh, you are going to need uh, extra hardware, maybe software licenses, uh, if you hire an external uh, red team, this is going to increase your costs. So if we had uh, low training uh, cost sessions, this means that we could have more complete training programs for the same money, or alternatively, uh, cover more additional IT areas plus the training uh, with the same budget. So this would be a huge benefit for, uh, for companies. Uh, one of the major uh, factors here that could allow an improvement in, uh, in reducing costs is reusing the product of a training session, typically network traffic. And if we can reuse it and customize it to our needs, uh, this will allow us to train without actually uh, mounting a new attack scenario every time we want to, to, uh, to prepare a training session. 
So from the ideal perspective, once again, uh, we think that uh, training sessions should minimize costs <clears throat> whenever possible. The third one is risk, and this one is a challenging one. Uh, because the risk is defined as the danger faced by uh, production networks uh, during a training session. Basically, uh, what we are, we are talking about um, what happens when you are conducting the training session in your production network, and suddenly you run a piece of malware. Maybe it's something that you don't want at all. So. The problem here, and we will see a little, bit, a little bit later, it comes with realism versus risk. Do we have realistic sessions or do we have safe sessions? Which comes uh, as a dilemma, like I said. Uh, we see that organizations tend to minimize risks. So this means that uh, they will uh, go for uh, less realistic, we could say, sessions and favor, uh, well, um, favor uh, less risk as well. The fourth and the last uh, criterion is uh, realism. And this is the level of detail that a training environment replicates, replicates based on what a real case would be. Here we are talking about another, another challenging uh, criterion because if you want to train in a good manner, in a realistic manner, uh, well, you need relevant cases. And relevant cases will require running maybe a piece of malware. And uh, well, uh, basically it's what you're going to find when a real security incident happens in your network. So if you want to run uh, some sessions in a safer manner, for example, with uh, keeping a high degree of realism with, uh, with uh, malware samples, uh, you will probably have to spend some time reverse engineering and understanding what piece of code uh, has been implemented there. Uh, otherwise, you could face a security incident during the, uh, the actual uh, training session if you're conducting it in, uh, in a live environment. From the ideal uh, perspective, once again, uh, we should try to maximize realism. Just to, once again, try to um, uh, train like you fight. So the uh, challenges that I presented before, uh, they tend to present themselves as uh, dilemmas. Uh, we have three. The first one is efficiency versus realism. And this is try to have uh, less costs when preparing and conducting training sessions. Uh, however, we are going to impact the realism of the session. Think about an example where you are going to reuse uh, recorded network traffic. You capture that in network A. And when you try to use it in your uh, network, it will probably have mismatches. For example, uh, network uh, addresses, uh, architecture, and so on. So if we think about what uh, companies are going to do when they face this dilemma, is to say, OK, um, it's better to run a little bit more efficient uh, because we have, you know, we have to take care of the budget as well. The second dilemma is risk versus realism. And this is try to have less risky sessions, but at the same time, uh, less realistic as well. And uh, the ideal situation here is to uh, train in a live environment where you have your production infrastructure. So this is what you're going to find during a, uh, an incident and also with real indicators. So you see what actually would happen uh, during an, an incident. So the dilemma, once again, if we have real malware samples in our environment, uh, well, people or organizations will tend to run the training sessions in isolated labs or uh, maybe on their own with uh, some virtual machines, virtual box, and, and so on and so forth, uh, which tends to reduce the realism. At the same time, if we are going for production environments, then uh, running uh, uncontrolled malware is a high risk. Therefore, uh, we either have to spend time preparing the session, reverse engineering and so on, or uh, reuse pieces of malware which are harmless or that could potentially have no impact at all. If we face the dilemma, 
uh, most companies will say, okay, uh, we are going to minimize risk, and at the same time, well, just live with less realistic sessions. The last dilemma is going to face risk and cost. And uh, usually, if you want to have less risky uh, sessions, you will have to spend more money. Basically, because uh, the time that you spend on the reverse engineering, testing, or maybe buying commercial uh, red team software, which can allow you to uh, uh, simulate malware in a, in a safer manner. Uh, so this is going to just skyrocket your, uh, uh, your costs. On the other hand, if you tend to run on, uh, on a lab or isolated uh, network segments, uh, this might require maybe extra hardware, extra infrastructure. We're talking about uh, firewalls, switches, uh, maybe licenses, uh, and so on. So when we face the, OK, risk versus cost, uh, organizations will go probably for costs. Once again, we try to minimize risk. But spending more money is not a synonym for better, especially from the vendor's perspective. Basically, because if you are training people and you see that the training is uh, costing too much, you will prioritize other tasks or uh, other uh, IT areas before. And at the same time, if uh, the organization is uh, spending a lot of money uh, just in, the, in their training program, uh, they will probably do it maybe once or twice a year instead of doing it regularly. So the common situation today is that we have training sessions full of either or decisions. You can just, you have to find a compromise if you want to, uh, to do it uh, in a more or less efficient manner. So from our perspective, ideal training sessions should have low difficulty when we are thinking about the implementation of these scenarios. It should have a low cost. At the same time, they should have very high realism and mean uh, no risk at all for the production networks. So our contribution to this is uh, the Blue Team Training Toolkit, and it's basically um, a toolkit built on two pillars. The first one is representing or using adversary replication techniques so we can keep a high degree of realism during the training sessions and at the same time keep reusability in mind so we can lower the cost of the product of the training session so you can reuse it over and over and at least um, get you a better return on investment so the goal here is to uh, solve the challenges that i presented before and uh, the idea is to bring these guys here, medium-sized businesses, universities, um, small businesses and individuals, up here to the level where large corporations are having full benefits from conducting uh, red team engagements, adversary simulation, and, and so on. Um, it's important to understand that the Blue Team Training Toolkit is not that red team replacement. In other words, uh, if you are training and if you are a Blue Team, your goal is to withstand the attack of a red team. And uh, as I say here, the tactics, techniques, and procedures are very important. And this is something that a red team can deliver, not at all. So the toolkit is uh, written in Python. And uh, like I said, it focuses right now on uh, adversary replication, malware simulation and uh, reusing network traffic by allowing manipulation and replay. Uh, the toolkit uses a command line interface, which is, uh, it reminds the Metasploit net, uh, framework, which means that if you have some experience with the framework, uh, you should be up and running in no time. It also helps uh, blue team cooperation. If you are uh, in a group of companies, or uh, if you have, for example, um, companies that cooperate within the same industry, the energy sector, for example, at least in Norway. Uh, here you can exchange uh, pickup data, network traffic, so they can run training sessions once again in, in a much more effective way. So the toolkit has uh, right now two main tools. We have Maligno running on version 3, which allows you to uh, simulate malware risk-free, and uh, you have the possibility to customize the 
um, command and control indicators that you will see on the network. At the same time, we have Pickup Teller, uh, which is a little bit uh, behind in the, in the version. And this is going to allow you to uh, customize uh, traffic and uh, replay that. Like I said, it's basically uh, designed for blue teams, but the functionality could become handy, uh, especially on the advanced uh, security engagements. We are talking about uh, other study simulation or red team engagements. So let's get to the demos. So let me present you the, the lab that we have over here. Uh, we have a Kali Linux machine, <coughs> which is going to uh, run the Blue Team Training Toolkit. And this is going to play the role in this case um, as an attacker or as the command and control server. Um, first of all, I have to say that the uh, Blue Team Training Toolkit is using a client server architecture. So this will be hosting the server part. We have a new Ubuntu machine here, which is going to play the uh, victim role when we simulate the, the infection. And at the same time, we have a security onion instance here monitoring the, the network that I have set up here. So let's get in. And uh, like I said, the Blue Team Training, uh, training Toolkit has a command line interface. Can you see that, by the way? OK. Uh, which is uh, using uh, syntax and you know commands, which are very alike to uh, what the Metasploit framework uh, is using. So we have mainly right now two modules. So we are going to run the first demo with the Maligna module. So we will focus on uh, attack simulation with uh, customized uh, indicators. So Maligno is uh, using um, a server on this computer. And uh, we can customize the type of uh, indicators by using malware profiles. So if we have a look at the profiles here, there are a few which are built in. Um, we are going to uh, see how they are made, by the way. <clears throat> so here we have a folder with profiles. And um, if we look at the contents, what we have is a Python script uh, divided in, uh, in a few classes. Basically, the first one having some background information about the, the malware profile. We have a request part where we are going to prepare all the indicators that the piece of malware simulating the, the, the actual malware is going to send to the um, command and control server. On the other hand, the response is going to uh, uh, list all the indicators that the server is going to send to the client. Finally, we have a network uh, area here where we can define uh, specifics for how the, uh, the communication is going to work. For example, uh, the delay from request to request that the uh, client is going to send to the server. Or if there is any specific encoding that you want to use for the uh, response body. <clears throat> so in this example, um, I have taken uh, some indicators, uh, information from a report uh, released by Simon Tech some time ago, uh, explaining uh, inf things about the Dragonfly um, campaign that was targeting uh, Western uh, energy suppliers. And in this report, there is a backdoor, the Aldria, also known as the, uh, the Havex uh, Trojan. And they were showing here specific indicators of a post request and, uh, and a response. So what I did, it was to uh, implement those uh, indicators here in the profile. So we have uh, everything in place. So let's try to simulate this case. <clears throat> So
So we have everything ready. Uh, we are going to use uh, HTTP as a protocol so we can actually inspect the, um, the traffic in, a, in an easy way. And uh, now that we have all the settings ready, uh, we are re uh, ready to uh, generate a client. Uh, this client should be uh, deployed on uh, the machines that we want to uh, simulate as uh, infected. Even though this is a Python script, you could use a Py installer, for example, if you want to, uh, to compile it and uh, deploy that in a Windows machine, for example. So we are ready, so we can run. And uh, if we go here to the victim machine, The client will try to connect to the um, <clears throat> to the server, to the command and control server, uh, by using the settings and uh, all the indicators that we have uh, specified in the profile. Uh, if we go back here to the uh, server, we see that there are uh, requests coming in. Uh, the good thing about the profiles is that since they are uh, scripts uh, written in Python, you can actually make uh, your own logic if you want. So if you want to have uh, URIs completely random, you can make it. Or if you want to do it in a much more, we could say, uh, obfuscated way, you can do it as well. So you can um, you know, keep your blue team uh, hunting if you want with uh, different stuff that you, you can plan for your sessions. If we go to the um, security on an instance, we see that one alert has been triggered, in this case, um, a Havex rat. And uh, if we look at the contents of these communications, let's try to compare what we have here in the report and what is actually being sent. So there you go. Okay, so if we have a look at the client request, um, basically all the headers, uh, the host, uh, content lengths, uh, user agents, uh, URIs, everything is like the report said. And uh, if we look at the uh, response, uh, it's pretty much the same. There are a few uh, glitches on the, maybe on the order of the, of the headers. Um, basically, like I said, this is fully customizable, so you can do whatever you want with the responses and whatever you want to send in, in here. So let's just stop this. Um, one more comment on the client. Um, the Maligno client is uh, proxy aware which means that if you're running with proxies, it's going to be uh, able to find the proxy, either with the static configurations or uh, with WPAD. And uh, I have to say that the uh, WPAD implementation is not a standard one, but the idea is to actually get out to the internet even if the company is having misconfigurations or uh, not using a standard setup in their networks. I have found a few cases, and that's why I went for, the, for this alternative. So let's just stop. <clears throat> I'm going to clear the um, alert here. And let's go back. In this case, uh, we are going to focus on the next demo, which is going to uh, use Pickup Teller. The idea behind uh, Pickup Teller is to get um, network traffic that has been previously recorded and uh, have at least um, the capacity to change those indicators that typically are important when analyzing traffic. We are talking about IP addresses, MAC addresses, uh, maybe using uh, fra uh, fragmentation and so on and so forth. So uh, here in the installation folder of the um, <clears throat> training toolkit, we have a folder called the profiles, uh, sorry, pickups, where we can add all the pickups that we want to work with. 
So in this case, uh, I am going to use this demo.pickup, which is uh, having traffic related to a ransomware infection, and it was gotten from malware at malware traffic analysis.net. So the first example is going to show us uh, how we can run just a simple uh, packet uh, replay. Basically, uh, just before we do that, there is nothing here in uh, Security Onion. So when we run the um, through the traffic and we inject it to the network, uh, we see that everything goes really fast, just within a second, as you can see here. And uh, if we look at the uh, alerts triggered in the IDS, uh, they are basically what we expected. It's uh, the attack chain until we get infected and uh, the ransomware is communicating. Um, in this case, we see that all the events have come uh, in the same second. So this is something that from our realism perspective is not too good, but we have uh, uh, methods for improving that. Uh, we can, of course, come into this um, you know, pivot on the on the traffic. See the transcript. <clears throat> okay, here we have a, an example. So it's quite simple. Um, if we want to improve, in this case, the uh, realism, uh, we could try the real-time option in the pickup teller module. In this case, we can set uh, real-time to true. And this is going to allow us to honor the inter-packet arrival time. In other words, how fast or how slow the packets were actually sent during the uh, when the attack scenario was uh, recorded or was captured. So in this case, uh, we can uh, run again. And uh, we will see that this is going to take a little bit, a little bit longer. So just in a moment, uh, we should see uh, the events popping up much more uh, you know, scaled. So we see now it was uh, 5, 0, 07, 12, 13. So this is going to actually follow the, uh, the actual uh, order that the packets uh, we're having at the time of recording the, uh, the network traffic. So let's just give it a moment. <clears throat> if we open Wireshark, uh, we should see the traffic flowing. Okay, let's see, still there. <clears throat> so here we see a few uh, DNS requests to uh, whatever.com. So well, you, you get the idea. Um, let's stop. Like I said, it's going to take some, some time, so let's try to speed it up. Let's clear again. <clears throat> so, so far, uh, we had a specific attack scenario in a pickup. So it, this is a story. It's like when you're watching a movie and, well, you say, oh, well, I hope or I wish I could be the, the actor, you know, kissing that lady or something like that. So the idea here is to try to bring that into the scenario that we want to use during the training. So here we have a few options which uh, can help us uh, pointing to the IP addresses which uh, are contained in the pickup file. Another one focusing on the MAC addresses 
and uh, here we see uh, the wire or the information that should be flowing uh, on the wire while we are conducting the training session. So uh, here I have a neutrino attack scenario. It's an exploit kit delivering uh, an attack. And uh, here, I hope you can see that, um, we have scenario where this computer, 10, 6, uh, 21, 104, is being attacked by uh, 62138139110. Uh, so I'm going to take these two addresses and I'm going to replace them with something uh, random. So just to make things uh, very clear, um, I will replace those addresses with, um, let's say, for example, uh, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, and the attacker machine with 44, uh, 55, 66, 77. So it's easy to, uh, to see. At the same time, uh, we can go a little bit further and check over here, the um, MAC address, in this case of the uh, infected machine or the, the victim. So we are going to try to uh, replace this address as well. So we are going to replace uh, 00080217AA with dead beef. So we are ready. Uh, we are going to uh, re as well set the, uh, the pickup name. And let's get uh, started. Everything should be clear. So here we can see um, one example coming with the, uh, the client. 10, 11, 12, 13. And the same over there uh, applied to the uh, attacker, in this case, for 455 and so on. Um, if we take a look at the uh, traffic here in Wireshark, we should also see that the uh, MAC address, uh, let's see if it was correctly written, it was 0008. 021C47. Okay, sorry, it was AE. Live demos. Sorry for that. <laughs> Okay, uh, so if we go back here to Squill, uh, we should see the, um, the info as well. 
And uh, if we have a look at the uh, MAC addresses, hopefully now I didn't make any mistakes. Okay, there we see uh, dead beef. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, a few tips especially for the red teams. Well, uh, if you're missing, especially on the Maligno uh, module, uh, this is now using uh, communications, as you see, which can be customized with your indicators. Uh, but how about if we could even take it further and inject payloads? Uh, well, this is a feature which is not implemented right now in version 3. However, Maligno 2, uh, the version 2, uh, is a standalone uh, tool which supports uh, both flexible uh, command and control server communications plus uh, payload or shell code injection. So you can use it if you want to uh, bypass uh, AVs and inject or whatever you want. Um, it will come, uh, as mentioned here, in the next versions of the Blue Team Training Toolkit. Uh, in addition to that, uh, have you ever been in a situation where you have a tight um, Blue Team looking at everything and uh, you need some sort of diversion so you can do what you need to do in the network without being detected? Well, if you have uh, these kind of situations, uh, like I, I have had sometimes, um, you can actually create network diversions by recycling or reusing uh, network traffic. Uh, let me give you an example. If you have a foothold in a network and you have VPN pivoting in place, usually uh, Cobalt Strike or uh, uh, Metasploit Pro, uh, they have these, uh, these features. So when you have your VPN server uh, running on the client, uh, you will have a virtual interface on your machine. If you inject traffic on that interface with a pickup teller, the traffic will be sent to the target network. And if you have uh, security countermeasures or uh, for detection in place, that traffic should be visible and uh, it should uh, trigger alerts over there. <laughs> So at that time, uh, you could use a real-time uh, feature in Pickup Teller to get the attack chain uh, more realistic. And uh, maybe while this uh, diversion is uh, occurring in the network, you can move on and do whatever you need to do without being detected, or at least hiding in plain sight. Um, if you try using um, real uh, network addresses, MAC addresses, and so on, um, the pickup teller module will also uh, address the packets to the right destinations. And if you have routers in place, provided there are no uh, firewall rules and so on, and routers will just route it. So if you have different segments, the traffic will flow from one to another, provided once again the uh, network uh, is, is allowing that. So where to find it? Uh, you can go to encrypto.no slash tools. There you have the uh, open source tools that we have released uh, in addition to the Blue Team Training Toolkit. And well, if you have any questions, I will be happy to uh, answer them. Thanks. So the question is, if we can export resource files just to maybe make things more automatic. Um, I can say that the Maligno uh, version 2, it does that. Uh, the, this one is, has not the feature yet, but it will come. Uh, the idea is to give, a, well, an environment which is known to uh, most uh, security professionals. And in this way, once again, have less preparation time while preparing your training session. So it, it will come. So the question is if the tool is going to be updated with new profiles and so on. Um, every time I release a, a new version, I tend to include something new, for example, profiles or uh, uh, cool functionality. Um, so I will try to do that. But uh, as you saw before, they are uh, Python scripts. So even the community could actually exchange. And that's the idea. So you you can do it in a, in a much more efficient way if you can just 
pick what you want and uh, for the simulation. Okay, then thanks. <laughs>